Oh, the battery's dead. Isn't that exciting? Can you hear your excitement? No, I came from San Francisco just to see you guys. Why? Because I'm originally from Sacramento. Yay! No one really knows that. Let's not let the media know that. I came from Livermore. Why the hell did you cover So I guess I got no clicking. Oh, it's the mouse. Now, I really excel in school when there is a professor that would ask questions and allow people to interact. Actually, I didn't do well when a person just sat there and talked with me. And my mind thought about girls and everything else. So what I'm going to do is walk around and kind of say, what do you guys are looking to learn? So I can make sure I cover it in this PowerPoint slide. Can I just... And briefly, this. I'd be curious like looking at people who have done both. Well, okay. Yeah. To see differences and, and is there a process to go through this? Okay. I actually want to talk to you about. It's the, I don't want people to think I'm like confused and everything because I'm not. It's yeah. just that I have a lot of interests, but one of them is uh, real estate. I used to be an investor, but it's for um, crowdfunding for people to own or occupy houses. I want to talk to you about that. Maybe not at this meeting, but maybe afterwards. Perfect. Yeah, I guess just the details and kind of like the real stories going through it. Uh -huh. and, I, and I think maybe for me, one of the things is um, I'm early, uh, early entry. Um, as far as I know, there's only one other major well-funded company that's doing this. So I'm trying to figure out how to kind of fly under the radar while I continue to make progress. And so like a crown crowdfunding thing might actually be a little bit too visible, at least initially. Okay. Hi. I'm interested in learning about the different types of platforms and which are most appropriate for the type of audience that I want to reach. What type of audience do you want to reach? I want to reach parents, parents. As, um, students, and I want to reach edu educators, okay. high school and community college and college. How about you, as far? Do you have any ideas, any questions? No. I'll let you go through it. Right, yeah. Just general information. Sure. Looking for a landmine, so what, what to avoid mm -hmm. and uh, what, what things to be concerned of when considering fundraising or Okay. Um, I, I'm a judge at some startup event, and he was presenting probably last Friday, right? That's right. Small yeah. world. How about you? Yourself? Uh -huh. I'm just trying to assess the market. Uh, for one thing, it's, it's interesting to me because as I mentioned before when I spoke, we had a start up here who was going to direct guns, but we overextended ourselves and we got into all kinds of projects. It was easy to sell these projects and basically we had a combination of product and and services to install these products. Okay, okay that's what we were doing. Well then we had our biggest investor had a heart attack. Oh. And our financial situation was such that we couldn't recoup it in time and all kinds of contracts and stuff were being, were being called due and stuff. So, so you have a question? Yes. My question is, uh, how, how do you get through? So you, you, you've done a, a successful campaign, uh -huh. then what? I want to see what people are saying about how they kind of turn it into a long live, real product. Like the wallet one is the one that I've heard about so far. Sounds good. How about yourself? I just don't know which type of crowdfunding campaign right for me. Okay. Yourself? So I get the three questions. First one is um, if you can touch on B2B versus B2C, okay. which one is more appealing for this particular okay. kind of time? The second one is in terms of is it more successful with the equity rounds or is it more of the second step that you mentioned, uh, which is basically rewards and discounts? Uh, the third question I had was, if you can touch briefly on what are the key elements of designing a, a successful campaign? Okay, sounds good. So far, everything is covered in there. How about yourself? Oh, we don't know how to raise money. We didn't know how to raise money. One year, by the way. Okay, good. How about yourself? Yes, got it. How to get started. Okay. Um, well, when, when businesses are talking to us, uh, I would like to know how, what resources there are that I can refer them to so that they can learn for themselves. Um, sure. And also, what type of businesses 
are best suited for a crowdfunding um, campaign, but it's, from what I've seen already, it sounds to me like it's more like what type of campaign is best for each type of business. Yeah. But also, can it be used in the nonprofit or social services world? Okay. Actually, that's something I would be really curious to, 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 to know if it can be used for nonprofits. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, mostly the, the laws. What what are the late, what's the latest update on the laws regarding equity okay. crowdfunding uh -huh. or uh, crowdfunding lending? Okay. And Perfect. Thank you. What I'm looking for is to see if uh, crowdfunding could be effectively used for gap funding. Like I actually have uh -huh. you know properties. Um, you know I have plans, and so you know getting to the point where you get like say a bank to finance the build out. You know there's there's that little gap right in there, yes. right? And, um, and, and I have several projects that I just need to get over that hump. So that's one thing. The okay. other thing would be if it could be used effectively to create actually um, funds, you know, that you can ongoingly use. Uh -huh. You know, because ultimately that's where I'd like to go. I'm interested in general information, but also I'm interested in the relationship uh, between crowdfunding and like DPOs or community investment funding uh -huh. and that type of thing and how it may interact with those. Okay. I'm interested in learning more, more about crowdfunding. All right. Startup Grind, they did a fireside chat for me in the Bay Area a couple years ago. So when I heard um, Startup Grind, I, I remember it did. So I actually work with a lot of startups, and I, I find myself being an advisor to a startup. Uh -huh. So I can really tell them, you know, where they should go locally or a lot from the Bay Area. But I, I, uh, I actually have uh, mentioned crowdfunding <coughs> a few of them, but I don't really know you know, I know like generalities, but not enough to, not, okay. you know, not enough detail. That's good. So I have a 16-year-old daughter who's doing her first crowdfunding campaign. She needs to raise over 3,000 to volunteer in Africa this year, this summer. I, on the other hand, need to raise three million for a startup. So I'm, t I'm looking under every rock, every stone. Perfect. And I'd be happy to. If she's 80 percent of the way, I'd be happy to share her link with you. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm here to learn it, one of the basics of crowdfunding so that I can see where the best model of money is on that for the kind of entrepreneurial ideas that, that keep popping up. Sure. So okay. Hey, that sounds fair. It's a pretty general question. Thanks so very much. I want to make sure okay. it works out okay. Uh, first step of equity crowdfunding, it's, the key is crowd, people getting connected. So how many people here have Twitter on their phones? Raise your hand. Follow me on Twitter today, I'll call you back. <laughs> and wait, and you start a relationship. And me on LinkedIn. And, you know, I, I just hit 10,000 followers or, or connections a few moments ago. So that means you get connected to me, maybe other people can help you. I'll explain why these are very important and why have I started off with social media when we're talking about equity crowdfunding with the laws and SEC raising millions of dollars. What is that? What does this have to do with anything? Pay attention. So who's following me on Twitter right now? You just did? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Add me to Facebook. Uh, fortunate to say that uh, I started off in actually Sacramento, um, from Hawaii, came to Sacramento, bought my first investment property at the age of 20 in Oak Park, was a fixer upper. Then I started to see more deals. And I started to say, wow, you know, there's something that's stopping me here. I wonder what that is. Do you, do you have an idea? It's yourself. Money. 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 Oh. I had more deals than money. I went to the bank, it was a property I had. I uh, went to get a loan on it, they did a computerized appraisal, they said it was six figure more than I purchased it. I was like, wow, this market is changing. So um, I always ask the question, how do I raise money so I can buy a portfolio? Because I thought if I had 10, I'll do well. And so that's always been my lifelong, lifelong thought, is how do I go about raising money? And everyone had all these different myths and beliefs on how to go about doing that. And, and I, Purchased in excess of 40 properties in Oak Park, sold 2005 and six, And uh, I moved to Palo Alto, attended Stanford, created an angel group called SF Angels, uh, an early investor in the group of the early investor in Google and PayPal. And one of the things he taught me was, besides getting in early on deals, is I needed to, he called it being taller than the other angels. Get, make myself notable so I can attract the brands and, and attract the investors and the funds. So I went to work on that. I think I did well. Over 60 articles. Um, CNBC squawk box a couple of times live in the studio. Um, investor Shark on CNBC, make me a millionaire inventor. 
the first uh, company to receive the approval in Silicon Valley to allow everyday people to invest. And I'm an investor in Dropbox, TaskRabbit, Liquid Space, first investor in Realty Shares, a leader in real estate crowdfunding. We'll talk about real estate in a moment. Fastest growing sector out there. And I can go into more detail, but it's not about my investment background, it's about how to get you to money. If you want to you know, take me home with you, go to YouTube and type in equity crowdfunding. The number one video that pops up is the most popular video of all time. This is a keynote talk I did in Finland. Had a lot of great information in there. How a company called Notion, an Internet of Things company out of Colorado, were not connected to any investors, raised two hundred fifty thousand dollars on a Kickstarter, and later on, Tim Draper, a big venture firm, reached out to them, uh, did a deal, and we co-invested in them, and we used Dream Funded to attract our accredited investors for the fund. They just raised. Um, this is two years later, but they just closed a ten million dollars Series A round. And it all started off with Kickstarter. That's Notion, the Internet of Things company. So it's possible to use Kickstarter and, and take the next step from there. So you want to check out that video. It has more detail. Here's a little bit about Sacramento. Way back when, when I was young, I thought about access to capital. That's been my life mission. I've been using it to make myself successful. Now I'm going to teach you the secrets on how to do it. I can't tell you if you're going to raise millions. I can't tell you if you're going to raise five dollars. But I'm going to tell you the basics. It's really going to be depending on you if you know how to sell or what your network is or what your business is. Does that make sense? But these are the fundamentals. And I just updated the slide uh, two hours ago because we're using things in our office. And I figured, you know what? Give you the most updated information from Silicon Valley. <clears throat> when the market crashed, what happened? Wow, I thought was, the world was going to keep going. It just getting boom and bigger and bigger. But it crashed. And then uh, they, uh, banks were loaning to small businesses. They weren't. And then if they weren't loaning, then they were laying off people. And so they, the government realized that uh, small businesses was the foundation of America. When, when small businesses have access to capital, they create more jobs. Don't you guys agree if we raise a million dollars, we'll hire a few people? Right. So they created this uh, law called the Jobs Act, signed in 2012. And we were excited. We're like, wow, this is going to be great. 2013 came, nothing happened. 2014 they came, nothing happened. 2015. And finally, at the end of 2015, the SEC, the day before uh, uh, Halloween, approved the rules and became law in uh, May of 2016 to allow everyday people to invest. But then you need to have what you call a registered funding portal. You have to be approved, registered with the SEC and approved by, by FINRA. FINRA regulates banks. So it took some time to get into this market, but he did it to help everyone to get access to capital. So that's the foundation of equity crowdfunding. Um, when I heard about equity crowdfunding, I started to go out and look for the early movers in the space because I thought real estate would be huge. Here's Nav here giving them the first check. Um, I was an advisor, helped them really grow, and now they're leaving the space, which is amazing how fast. They actually grew faster than our company. We only have 12 employees. They have over 80. We did, they did over 300 million. What company is that? Realty shares. or real estate oh, crowdfunding yeah. sites. So after creating that, I created a group. And what I found is that I, I was fortunate to go and speak throughout parts of Silicon Valley. And, and then I did a keynote talk at South by Southwest. Have you heard of South by Southwest? Mm -hmm. And people would come up to me and they said, hey, I heard you had an early Google member in the group. Can you uh, maybe connect me to them? And maybe we can co-invest? <laughs> and so I started thinking, maybe there's a way that I can allow all these investors to co-invest with us to help the other entrepreneurs that wish they had access to these investors. So I created Dream Funded as a, a way of doing that. So we're the first one to, to receive the approval. Um, we talk about cash rabbit funded on Dream Funded, but that was with accredited investors only. Accredited investors are people that have an income of 200000 a year, 300000 or a net worth of a million dollars, including their home. So we were operating since 2014 with accredited investors, and uh, it really grew well. So now is the time to raise from, from everyone. I want to show you this little map because um, a network's really important when you're raising money. Don't just look at one person as one person. That person may know other people. That person may, that backed you may reach out to other people and help you. Or if the person is not interested in backing you, always treat them right because they can connect you to someone else. But if you're like, yeah, you're just whatever it is, you're never going to get it connected to others. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Yay. It's not that easy, guys. It's hard <laughs> It's hard work, it, but I'm going to show you how to use the platform to attract the money, and I'm going to use a different, show you the different systems and how it works. But in theory, keep that in your mind while you're doing it. Okay? So the crowds about us, everyone coming together, 
Uh, for equity crowdfunding, we're talking about for Title III of the Jobs Act, this new rule that's one year old, have to use a registered funding portal that talks about refund or, or drain funding. You have to apply, they have to approve you. They can, they're really gatekeepers for the investors. The Security Exchange Commission, FINRA, says basically they're going to trust the registered funding portals to screen out the bad opportunities or opportunities they feel are not the best or for whatever reason they they are going to select their friends to put them in front of the investors and say no to others. They, everyone has different approval. Then you have to fill out the thing called the Form C, which is a simple, it's kind of a simple document, but it's really not. It's about 60 pages. It basically tells you in 100 different ways, at least it tells the investors why they should, can, why you can lose money, why they can lose money. If they can't get the next round, the business may not be work out well, and these are the directors that we have in our business and we may not have a patent. It'll have all the reasons why a person can't wake up one day and say, you know what, I lost my hundred bucks. You didn't tell me I could lose it. Well, did you see the Form C? It has 60 pages of all the disclosures. So I don't think you have much to worry about. CPA, later or not, you know, if you're an entrepreneur who wants to raise a hundred thousand, I know no one wants to raise a hundred thousand. Everyone wants to raise millions, right? But if you want to raise over 100000 you have to get a CPA. It's called a CPA review letter. It doesn't mean it's an audited financial if you're using equity crowdfunding for the first time. And I assume all of us are because no one else has really done it. If you start with a $100,000 offering, you don't need a CPA letter and see if it even works. Because some people can't even get past 25000 because for whatever reason, they don't have the crowd. They don't have the following. Something is wrong. So why spend the money with a CPA, in my opinion, to pay $3,000 for the CPA and you're not raising anywhere near that. My and we can always question. dispute this, by the way. This is a very cool question. The previous slide that you showed, is this for the platforms or is that for the people who are trying to raise the fund? This is for the issuers. Issuers meaning the startups that are trying to raise the money. You, as everyone wants to raise the money, you guys want to all run to the Title three platforms, Dream Funded, We Funder, to raise money from everyone. They have, are, they have the ability of saying no. So then you have to find one that will say yes. And if they do say yes and you're approved, then you have to fill out these forms. The old standard way of raising with 506D from accredited investors, I'm assuming you guys don't know that or you want a new way of doing it, I'm just going to talk about that briefly. So I'm guessing you're going to also go to like how to get them to say yes? I'm going to talk about some strategies through this. I'm not in terms of the funding portals. Each one makes their own decisions. but. I can do that right now. In fact, you guys should like stop me and say, hey, I, that wasn't clear, or I don't believe you, or tell me more about that, so we can go in more detail, because I'm here for you. It's not about talking to all you guys. Basically, it's a team. If you have a team, that's what they look for. They don't just look for an individual. And if you have traction, so you have sales, you have some something. If you just have a slide, I'm going to do this, I have no prototype. It's almost an automatic rejection. And they also look at your social media following, because essentially the first people that are going to support you are people that know you. And if you have two followers on Twitter, five on LinkedIn, um, and you don't look really active on Facebook, it's an, almost an automatic rejection because this marked money comes <coughs> from the community, and part, more, more specifically, your community. You're probably thinking, well, that's not fair. I mean, I'm looking for other people's money. I don't have money in my community. Remember the network chart. People are connected to others. It's very similar to in person. Like if I met you, you know, Curtis, how you doing, Curtis? He's like, I don't know about that Manny guy. You're probably thinking that now. I don't know about that Manny guy. But at least I met him. Imagine someone reaching out to you you never met before. So I think the crowd is smarter than the government tries to put so many uh, bureaucracy on it. Because some people right now are really smart. They're not just investing. They're doing research. They're, they're coming through a network. They're not just seeing a out the blue and saying this is a winner. They're looking at the person, and that's what I think that's the key. They look at the people first and what their social media presence is, and then they see if there's uh, some traction, some type of sales, and they try to see if their what they do matches up with what they're going to do. If they're computer scientists and they're going to be selling tires, maybe maybe they found a new way of selling tires. But if the guy sells tires and is going to go into the computer science <coughs> and trade this type of software then it may not be a uh, thing that people would understand. And so the platforms are also looking at, will the investors invest in this? Because they don't want to waste time loading someone that they think they're not going to be successful. This is not a free-for-all type business. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And as I start to warm up. Sense. Yes? What, what kind of threshold are you looking for on the social media platforms? 
It depends. It's a fam famous lawyer answer. It depends. <laughs> More than one. You know, Less LinkedIn. LinkedIn, you have a 500 plus. If you're 500 plus, you maybe I don't know if you're above average, but you have a good following. Mm -hmm. So following is important, especially for certain sites that will ask you to download their the list on LinkedIn, so you can invite them, people to uh, see your campaign. You know, in absence of that, explain that you have a list of you know people that you went to college with, or a list of some network that you're a part of. Because when you get started, it's going to be people you know that are going to be the initial money. And the best way of doing a campaign is not launching a campaign and hoping that money will come in. You should know who's going to launch, who's going to fund you before you do so. Imagine walking into a restaurant and there's an empty tip glass. Are you guys going to put money in there? Maybe mm, yeah. I feel sorry, you probably don't care, but if you put, see a tip glass with lots of tips and a person in front of you, put some money in there, it's more lead us more to probably filling the tip glass if there's tips in there already. Campaigns online are very similar. This is just human nature, just going online, ladies and gentlemen. And relationships is critically important. Just like offline, online there's a version of relationships as well. I'll go into more detail there. I just wanted to yes. say that um, I realized that what I have to do before I get on a crowdfunding platform, because I just got a break for just now from that guy back there and you, so basically, my rideshare drivers, all I really have to do before I come on the platform is just say, hey, what are your challenges? And what are your you know, issues and what's going on? And then engage them that way and then get like you know, maybe a 1,000 followers or so. Then I can go and do that. But for me to think that, because I was thinking the opposite. I was thinking because my drivers are going to be my investors, and there's so many of them, that I would just have to go on the platform and then let them know, hey, the whole marketing strategy of my platform is that you're going to have equity. That's kind of like my marketing strategy. But I see it now totally different, and I just want to put that out there because maybe if other people don't have a following, because I've been afraid to get a following because I didn't have my platform built, you know what I mean? And so the thing is, is that now I see that I can just, yeah. you know, engage people by asking them, you yeah. know, what their challenges are, right? What do you right. think about that? Well, entrepreneurship is very much like chicken and the egg. Which comes first, the chicken or the egg? In real estate investing, what comes first, the deal or the money? Right. The players know it's the deal first, then you get the money. You don't raise, try to raise the money because you'll get people running away from you. I mean, unless you're in different families, maybe that would be a different thing. But the point is, sometimes if you're trying to build a following, show yourself as a leader in the space, create an event right page just like this, invite people. You're talking to people, hey, can you come to my event? Build that following, get their email address, ask them permission to market to them. Maybe create a newsletter. And, and this is consistent to everything you're doing, guys. This is not this is not meeting a person and scoring for scoring with the person. This is building a relationship with a person so they know who you are while they're gonna be willing to receive your story. So let's say let's say you have a campaign. Yes, I'm going to grab my water, but I'm listening and to you very carefully. You, and you, um, it's it's successful. You managed to raise 150000 to a million dollars, and a few weeks before it closes, you have, say, $600,000. Okay. But you really wanted to get to the million dollars. Yeah. Would you buy a list from a Facebook or somebody like that and go for those folks, or would you continue to be the same people? Beat the message out with the same people that you've gone to before. That's a good question. First off, close the money, take the money. Don't think about it. You're going to get more and more and more. But you remember I said earlier, the person that you gain some backing from. There's two types of backing you can get from people. I talked about it in my YouTube video. Number one, you're going to run into a lot of people that you're going to run into. You're like, I'm going to do this crowdfunding campaign, and I need your financial support. What do you think she's going to tell me? Take a guess. Don't say she's going to say yes, because you're too optimistic. What do you think she's going to say? Well, what is your backup? And what is your um, know you. track basically, record? Basically, she's going to tell me no. I'm like, but, she's like, no, you probably tell me yes. I wait to you would tell me yes. <laughs> the lawyer's going to tell me no, because they're nice to tell you no. Chris says, no, nah, I can't do it. I got kids in college, this and that. I was like, Chris, you want me to be a success? Of course I want you to be a success, Manny. But I just can't back you right now. OK, do you mind sharing my campaign? 
And so sometimes you get a list of supporters. Like in politics, Sacramento's a great political town. I was just at a fundraiser yesterday. There's two types of people, those that donate and then those that don't knock on the doors. They're both important, but you can use both of them. So if Chris can, is going to promote it via Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, if I have that much rapport with them, then I'll have a list of people that can tap into other networks to bring in more money to the campaign. If you tapped into your first layer of network, people that already donated, maybe reach out to them and, or invested, reach out to them to see if they can open up the doors to others by sharing the campaign. If you know them, then try, try to talk with them, because each one of those knows a couple hundred people. You don't know who they know that can bring you more money. Yeah, but you tried that already. You did? I mean, I did, but the people who I'm talking about did, so that's why I'm asking. Everyone has different techniques. I don't know. Well, I'm, just, I'm curious if, if, you would buy, if you would buy the list or not. Which is I mean, look, list. You guys are people, you know I'm speaking here. If I go around and ask you guys for $100, I'll probably get 300 But you've got $600,000 worth of people supporting you, so it's not like you have a, a bad story to tell people on that list. You see, that's why I'm asking Spam. about whether it be worth buying it or not. Spam. So if I called Kim out the blue, mm -hmm. I'm giving you the answer. If I called you out the blue, more likely than not, he'll hang up on me. If I knocked at everyone's door and you guys didn't know who I was, you guys were more likely than not close the door on me. All right? They'll say, my, the law of maintenance service is already taken care of. <laughs> That's <was> funny. <laughs> kind of a joke. <laughs> we didn't think it was funny. Right. So, I did. <laughs> if you do buy a list, just like every relationship, warm them up before trying to get them to marry you. So maybe it's inviting what we do. I use a lot to build up our investor base of over 160,000 members globally. Is Angel Investing right for you? A webinar, myself and our lawyer. Or it's myself and some prestigious venture capitalist talking about the risk and what, how they invested in Uber. So, and using Eventbrite, which is free, and then inviting them, you can send up to 2,000 names uh, through Eventbrite, I mean emails. So see who starts, and who starts, then starts a relationship. So you gotta take them through a relationship <coughs> channel before you try to market to them. You have three weeks, man. Huh? You got three weeks. You only got three weeks. How much of a relationship am I going to get, man? It depends on the person. Think about relationships. It depends on the person. Right. Sometimes you never know. Okay. Sometimes it's the acceptance of the webinar. They like what they hear. The next week they're backing it. It depends on the person. It depends on who you are. Yeah. Well, and if you don't, don't forget, you close that campaign, you can always do another. These tactics work for just normal human beings, no matter where they're at in the world. These are very powerful tactics. And so, use them with caution. Um, these are a few sites I like. These are free. Actually, this one costs money, and that one costs money. Uh, I can tell you that the first one, uh, really helpful for Dream Funded, it brought in lots of investors. So we use it as a lead generation system from other sites to come to our main site. Anyone that's out there looking for leads, no matter what your business is, if you have a website, probably smart to get on those sites because it'll bring your, perhaps your target customer to you. Are we going to have access to these slides? You can. And I was thinking of doing a webinar where I go into more detail. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> okay. Crowdfunder um, is also a good one. Right now they boosted up their prices like $500 a month, but there's a lot of investors on there and if you do things right, they will come to you. Good site. Again, I'm not an investor in any of these, I wish I was, at least the top two. I see it's a little trickle on that one. I don't know if it's worth paying for. Nothing on this one. But it's good to set up a profile. A couple of these will like call you or tell you, hey, you know, we got all these investors, we'll market your program, we'll charge you twenty five thousand or two thousand. It's a waste of time. Just may as well just do it yourself. Nothing that I'm telling you is magic here. Someone else can try to do it for you, but hard work is still required. Um, this is my LinkedIn. I want to talk, talk to you about it because imagine for a moment you had a billboard. If I was to say buy one of the billboards or rent one of those billboards, it's pretty expensive out there. Imagine LinkedIn being your billboard. LinkedIn being your billboard. Why is that important? How many people are on LinkedIn right now? How many people really keep your LinkedIn updated and drag the hell out of you and, and have, refer, have recommendations and your awards and your education? It's important because if you're doing equity crowdfunding, the first site they tend to look at is LinkedIn. If a reporter wants to do a story, they check out LinkedIn. And as well as LinkedIn is 
who you are online. I can show you how to use LinkedIn to get new potential investors to talk to you. And sometimes with certain platforms, such as these platforms, these are not regulated funding portals. Regulated funding portals, you cannot talk to the investors, and the investors have to invest directly, and you can't have any communication with these strangers. Those are typically for your friends and family you can talk to, but you don't reach out to people out the blue to suggest for them to go on a registered funding portal. And if you do that, maybe you, people do that, but haven't heard it. People are doing it on the um, certain sites that are not, these are not equity crowdfunding sites. This site does um, what you call a syndicate, which doesn't affect you unless there's an investor that's picking you up and then marketing to his friends. These are just paid sites to be listed on a site. They call it equity crowdfunding, but it's not. You control the terms of what you want to sell it for. You say how much is raised. You say how much is, you have commitments. You make all the decisions on these sites. So if you market somewhere else, like on LinkedIn, and you start a conversation, and then show them this, then you can get your new investor in. And they may be bigger than, say, $100 investors. What type of checks do you think come through equity crowdfunding sites. What do you think is the average? $50. $50? Okay. Remember, title, we're not talking about Title III in the last year, which I'm kind of disappointed with the results, but I'm going to give you a reason why now and why you, how you can change it. What do you think the average check size is? How much? $500. $500? What about the biggest check size? Well, you're saying this is before when they had to be yeah, before. vetted? So but it's like Credited five, investors. Five ten thousand. Five ten thousand. How about you, Chris? What do you think the biggest check comes through equity crowdfunding? We're talking about title. If we're talking about standard five hundred six b old fashioned way, but using the internet to do it without regulated funding portals. Yeah, I would think several thousand dollars. Several thousand. Okay. I carry around. I carry it in my pocket for a reason, because it's, a, it's unheard of for me. And my biggest check that I received as as raising it for a fund was two hundred thousand. And I really, this is years ago, and it was a very influential family. I had to build relationships for a long time to get $200,000 to back my campaign, I mean, not my campaign, but my investment company. But this was uh, $450,000. What? Awesome. I put it in my pocket, so it's not $1,000, guys. The checks are quite large. And you never know who's out there that really likes what you're doing. But if you don't market to it, you don't know. It's a lot you better to go back to that. Huh? You endorse the back of that. It's already cash. I'll pack it as memory. Yes. I have um, over 500 followers on my uh, LinkedIn account. Who are those people? Like, I know it's a dumb question. It's like, I really don't go there, and I don't even know who they are. I don't and know. Usually, it's something like your connections. I can, okay. I um, or sometimes you're just notable and they want to pay attention to you. Either way, it works. So you have influence if you post articles. Like when I was at the White House, some, someone did a uh, story, I put it there. The people that are paying attention, they listen to it. Or if it's really good, then I put it on Twitter to retweet it out there. Or I put it on LinkedIn. Then I, I'll get uh, <coughs> uh, recommendations. Maybe Laura or Lauren or anyone in here will do a, an actual recommendation about my talk. Um, so if you got 49, what happens is people are spying on me, like they Google Manny Fernandez Stream Funded, they come across this, they want to check me out, if you will. I tell them now, it's, the more they check me out, the more they fall in love with me. But if you guys are going to do equity crowdfunding, think in advance. People are going to check you out, not just on that site. They're going to look at other places. So make sure your online profile demonstrates what you want them to see. If you want to be an expert at X, Y, and Z widgets, then make sure you have things associated with XYZ widgets so they know you're talking about it. How much time would you say you spend kind of cultivating your social network? How many times have uh, I spent, uh, how, how long, let me think. Because like LinkedIn is not quite as dynamic as something like Twitter or Instagram. What do you mean by dynamic? Well, I mean, well I guess, yeah, Just I was as thinking as far as your CV out there. What do you mean by dynamic? Well, I, I just meant like you don't, Updated as often as you do some of the sure. other. Sure, you can. You can do it through stories. Yeah. You can do it through a basic post, like yeah, I'm going to be speaking at this event here. So, therefore, all your followers, in theory, will hear about it. So, each one is very similar to a social network you push and blast. The only difference is you have higher income people paying attention to you here that could help you with your business. 
Are you going to ask kids? You may have friends. You know, <coughs> may have more already. Do articles send you things that you write, or like articles like about you? No. Yeah, this was like for example, this was someone else wrote it, Crowdfund Insider, and I just reposted it, gave them a link to it. But I thought it was if people are spying on me, man, we'll see about the TV show and we'll see about the White House. Good thing to start off with. This was um, an article I posted, and then I liked it, and then this was about the event today, and I liked it. So that's my activity. Um, if you want a good version of a LinkedIn site, you know, just check out my profile and try to put your awards and anything you have. If you're missing awards, think about how you can get the awards. You know, if you're missing reviews, think about who you can help to get you reviews. But you want to look very strong and credible there because that will determine if they make the investment. And you won't even see this happening. This is not just, I have a website, please give me your money because I'm going to be a, the best entrepreneur ever. They're going to do a little research. Does that make sense? So everyone should follow me here on Twitter. Then you can get access to other investors that are connected to me. I can't tell you this. Uh, you asked me how much, what are we doing here and how long? I think since 2000 and, well, been public speaking and have people connect. Also have a, um, a full-time person inviting people, uh, people that are potentially want to do business with through LinkedIn. You have a custom message and people are connecting on average about 200 a day because they're important to for future business. So this is one thing I'm going to call your online broadcasting network. <coughs> Before you do your equity crowdfunding campaign, unlike the other gentleman that says do nine months, I mean, think about it in the 30 days, 60 days. How do you get all the people you know and you get them organized? I remember meeting this woman named Lady Gaga, and she says, one-time meeting, lifetime relationship. Because I called her on Twitter, like, what is this about? One time meeting, lifetime relationship. And that's what I'm trying to engage here today. If you connect to me on LinkedIn, to start this relationship. But you guys already have relationships, so take these relationships, get them in an email list, Excel spreadsheet. It'll be very powerful for what you're going to do next. Add them to LinkedIn, add them to Twitter, add them to Facebook. So you can start marketing to them, maybe before the campaign's coming or when the campaign's happening, or a webinar, or a talk you're going to do, so they can know what you're up to. It moves them and warms them up. So when you do ask, you know, available for them to take advantage of it. But when you start your campaign, investors don't really care about you at all. Everyone cares about themselves. They could care less. The only way people care is they see what's in it for them. That's everyone's favorite radio station, WIIFM. Most those people in the room <laughs> that are professionals know what I'm talking about. So when you're selling something, explain how they're going to make money where you think is really going to go. Don't be like, hey, I'm raising $3 million. Okay, so what? I'm raising $20 million. What does that mean for the investor? What do I get out of it? Well, I think that with your support, this thing can really grow, and you can share it in a growth with us. Whatever the story is, you know, in Silicon Valley, everything's looking to be acquired or go public. Sacramento may be a little different. But talk about what's in it for the investor. Try to hammer that home. Does that make sense? The site. You're kind of saying, don't leave out the exit strategy. You talk about it, it's the end of the movie. So like, you know, most startups, other cities are kind of taught like, you know, I'm doing this, and by the way, I'm raising a million dollars. Okay, cool, what does that mean? Before the million dollars, you talk about, you know, we're, we're creating something we think can be acquired by Google or by Facebook for this price, and we think we can do it in 24 to 36 months. Even though it may be hype, it may be bullshit, it may be real, it gives them a vision of somewhere that they can get their money out. Angel investing is a long-term play. I mean, I'm in, I have a lot of paper, you know, companies that are not public, like Dropbox or TaskRabbit or Liquid Space. Money just sits there. It does me no good, right? I can brag about it, but that doesn't give me a meal. So if the more you can explain your end vision, your end result, before you ask for the money is an important thing <coughs> to trigger a different type of mindset. Yes? Um, I, I honestly, I'm going to be honest. I really, really just really would like for drivers to have some equity. I mean, honestly speaking, if a VC never invested in me, I know that sounds crazy, but I'm saying it in public. Uh, for the time, sake of time, get their email addresses and sell them directly. I'm going to speed this up. What? Get their email addresses and sell them directly. The VCs? No, the drivers, the people that care. Yeah. Get their email addresses. Yeah. And the people that you want their money from, get their email addresses. Right. And, talk and do them. an equity thing for you. Get them warmed up. Okay. Uh, think about dream influencers. We call dream influencers people that you know that can back 
Now, not so much back you, but we'll reach out to our network to bring people to you. Think about who your top three influencers who's going to help share your campaign. So you're not by yourself. There's other people that can help you bring in some money. Maybe they're an influential person, maybe they're a family member, someone you may know. Create a video. I think you guys know. Create a short two or three minutes. Intro what you're doing, why you're doing it, what's in it for the other guy. Share the video. Do not need to be professional. Don't waste $5,000 by a pro thing. Why do people make money doing that or those pro companies? Um, here's an interesting thing. This is not equity crowdfunding. This is basic how to raise money using equity crowdfunding. Use the, you think about this as a lead. This is the best part, guys. Think about this as a lead. Go to Angel List, look for the investors that may care about what you're doing. If they invest in high tech and you're in real estate, maybe don't talk to them. If they are like clean tech and you're doing a clean tech startup, maybe talk to them. Just figure out if they invested in a similar category before reaching out to them. Get their name, other platforms like Crowdfunder, Crowdfunder is a good one. Search their name on LinkedIn, send them a custom message, not this BS. You know, connect. Say, hey, you know, hey, George, I admire your, your industry space and intel. I'm working on something. Love to get your advice. Or, you know, maybe we'll network and help each other down the road. Keep it simple. So they want to start the conversation. Now they connect with you. Don't just, hey, Chris, I got this great idea. I need a million dollars to get it done. Don't do that. That's too aggressive. They're gonna unfriend you. Just, you know, hey, thanks for connecting. I really admire that you're, a, you know, you're a lawyer and. You must be doing well in Sacramento. And leave it at that. So they see a positive impact. And later on, you can follow up with something else. Start the connection, start the relationship, and then pitch them later. Asking for advice is very powerful. Do not just jump, jump out there and ask for money. Doxin is something we use. This is really non-equity crowdfunding for funding portals. This is just raising money in period. But if you're using equity crowdfunding, Docsend is a good place if you take your PowerPoint and you upload it to Docsend, you get this little link. You could be talking to an investor on the phone and he does, you don't have time to go in front of his computer. You can send him the link through text. He'll have it there. You can pitch him while he's watching the, while he's on the phone with you. It's a simple way of doing it. LinkedIn Sales Navigator is about 60 bucks. Why is that important? Because you can target people in a specific zip code based on their specific <coughs> industry, based on their specific education or school they went to. Very targeted. Then you can market to them and say, hey, these are the 200 people that could potentially invest in me. They don't say they're investors, but those that are 40 years old, typically with a graduate level education, maybe in that industry, more likely to not be a potential investor. Start marketing to them, and that's one way. Or even you can look for people like members of different angel groups. They have it in their profile, but that's one way you can reach out to them without going through the group directly. Uh, meet me is, this is our way of booking a time with me like you've been booking a time with me. I use that to keep everything organized. I was just talking to a football player today. I sent him that link. He booked the time through Twitter. It's very powerful to bring a lot of people together no matter where they're at in the world. They choose the time. It's simple and it keeps you organized. One thing I want to remember, the legal part is important when you're raising money. Make sure you always work with a good lawyer. There's one today. <laughs> um, so Title III of the Jobs Act, you have to apply. You cannot just go on there. And that's really mainly the benefit of that. You can go after non-accredited investors. That means everyday people. It may not work for everyone, but the key about equity crowdfunding is it kind of has work to do. It's you, the entrepreneur, got to fight. Some ones that are get on the platform, they think they're hot stuff and that money's going to come in. The entrepreneur has got to reach out to people they know to get this thing started. I think that's the biggest flaw. People think, oh, the money's going to flow to them. It doesn't work like that. And so if you guys want a future webinar, I'm, I'm thinking of putting one together, just email me here, info at drinkfunded, and uh, just start my Instagram account. Feel free to connect with me and I can then connect with you and see what you're doing. And, and if you follow the steps, build a relationship, then maybe you pitch me later. Any questions? <coughs>